Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4 BMG HOA Ham. For those of you interested in the GD88 from Radiodity, it's back on the workbench today. This will be the final video prior to the review. And we're going to talk today about the software download that lets you put into this your own custom code plug, as well as software that will allow you to update the radio firmware. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to put a custom pick on your startup screen. It's a tiny pick. It's very small resolution, so it's not going to be high quality, but you can change it from that stock Radiodity logo to your own custom logo. And today we're using the HOA Ham Boss Hog logo. Navigate to the Radiodity GD88 webpage and scroll down to where you can click here to learn about CPS code editing software. And we're going to choose the David Mike Mike 7 Delta Brava Tango CP editor software. It's known to be more user friendly than the native Radiodity program that's provided. When you choose this option, you're taken to another web page that kind of shows the details associated with this code plug editor. And it's as simple as click here to download, depending on what version you're attempting to install. Bottom left hand corner of your computer monitor, you're likely seeing that code plug installation software downloading, just waiting for you to click on it. And then of course you get this Windows protected PC warning. Only click on this if you're comfortable. I'm running it anyway, and this is the software that I'm going to install to be able to edit the code plug on my Radiodity GD88. Because I'm in a dual monitor installation, I had to grab this window which popped up on my other screen, pull it over to my main screen so you could see what was going on, and then my screen blanks out for just a couple of seconds, and then all of a sudden I get a message telling me that the installation was complete. Click the close button and the software should open for you to view. While I like the brick feel of the GD88 in my hand, not a single one of us wants to brick our HT, so make sure you read any files that come along with the firmware updates. And we're using the CPS software we just downloaded to do the firmware update. Plug the programming cable into your HT and into the USB-A port of your computer. Click read from radio so that the CPS can see what's on the HT as well as confirm the connection. It will take several seconds for it to read your radio, and I'm gonna speed this up so I don't waste your time. When it's done reading the information on your radio, it'll come to this summary screen. Navigate to the Tools menu and then select Update Firmware. Well, here's a message we all love to see, isn't it? I feel risky tonight, so let's go ahead and select the firmware files. To do this, we navigate back to the Radiodity website and go to their download section, choose the GD88, and we'll be taken to a page where there are some download files that we can choose. And we wanna choose the 2023-03-30 firmware. That's assuming that you don't already have that firmware on your radio. Go ahead and click on that option. And in the bottom left-hand corner of your computer screen, you see that zip file downloading. You'll wanna double click on that zip file and it will show you two bin files, two bin files that for my upgrade, I'm going to be using for this installation. Save those files in a location that you remember because in a couple of minutes, you're going to need to refer back to them and pull them into the CPS software to update the firmware. Remember me talking about reading text files? Here's a text file that talks about this download and this firmware update to tell you everything that's going on and any special information you need to know and perhaps some instructions on how to do it. If you're wondering about your firmware version, then navigate to device info and you can see at the version option, it'll tell you precisely what level of software you are at and whether or not you need to upgrade. With your radio turned off, your cable plugged in, go back to that tools menu and choose upgrade. And when you select the firmware, you wanna start with the bin file that's marked A in parentheses, A. And when you select that file and open it, then secondly, you wanna go back and choose the B bin file. And now both files are there, ready to be transferred to the GD88. And now comes the fun part. If you've read the instructions ahead of time, it very clearly says press and hold down the P2 button while turning the radio on. That does absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, here, when you click update firmware, okay on COM3, look, hold the P2 button and switch the power on to put this in IAP mode. The P2 button does nothing. 
press and hold the P1 button while you turn your radio on and it will put you into the IAP mode. I have gone ahead and turned the lights down so you can see what's going on here as best as possible. Tell it OK and it starts on IAP A and it's flashing the new firmware to the A side of the radio. I'm going to speed this up because it takes forever, but you can see the count flashing all the way up to 395. With the right to the A side of the radio complete, now it's gonna take us over to the B side of the radio. So just tell it okay. And here we are going over to side B. You're going to notice something slightly different as we go over to side B. It doesn't do a countdown. It doesn't go through how it's flashing and take us page by page in a page count. So we're not really quite sure when we're done, except that the red light goes off the top of the radio and it kind of tells us it's done. We just can't watch the progression of it. I did this three times just to make sure that everything was going correct. And my little window here giving me a percentage of completion is accurate, but there's just nothing indicating on the radio. When the flash was complete, I did look at the firmware and indeed it was updated. So don't be surprised if you're not seeing anything happening on the screen of the GD88 itself. Just follow the dialog box here, turn off your radio and turn it back on again. And oh no, I don't have the black screen of death, I have the white screen of death. The instructions said that this happens in a small percentage of cases. I'm not going to go through the details here, but just follow the instructions of a turn on sequence and this will completely disappear on its own. Now let's put your own custom touch on your GD88 and go from this to this. Power your radio off and then back on again. Open up your CPS software and read from the radio. Choose the correct COM port and go ahead and let the read occur. I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch the entire thing. If only we could read from our radios this quickly, wouldn't that be great? With the read over with, go up to the tools, choose the change power on logo and now we need to find a bitmap image which is a 160 by 128 max i'm going to use a piece of software called snagit it's a glorified uh, snippet program and i'll leave a link to it below in the description it is a purchased piece of software i've picked mine up off of amazon i am choosing my logo that i want to change in size you might have other software that you can use and you don't need to buy anything maybe you can find something free on the internet you want to change the size and have a maximum of that 128 eight pixels it's going to make this thing tiny and you'll see here in a second once i finally figure out the right place to save it you'll just see how small my logo actually is once you get that logo saved in a place that you can remember click on ok and then you're going to select that so you can pull it into your cps software and here i am finally getting to the point where i'm saving that bitmap image and we're ready to go. I'm saving it to the desktop. And now we can finally go over to our CPS software and choose open image. There it is. Click on it, tell it open. And now we're ready to download it to our hardware. As soon as I clicked on the right to, for whatever reason, all the windows got small and I couldn't expand them. So you need to click on that little OK option right under the select COM port. And guess what? We're greeted with this again. We all know what happens when we press and hold the P2 and power on the radio. Nothing happens. It does not take us into program mode. This is something Radiodity should fix. Either get the instructions to match how it does work or match the radio to what the instructions say. Nothing works. When you hold that P2 while you power on, you need to press and hold the P1 and then power on the radio. It automatically goes into the mode where you can download and I didn't need to click on any other option window. It just automatically started to download my image to the radio. All I needed to do was click OK on Write Complete, power off my radio, power on again, and all of a sudden you can see that my custom Boss Hog HOA Ham logo is here. 
I really like features like this where we can customize our radios with images that are important to us. I hope you found this useful, friend. If you use the GD88, I think features like this are of interest to you, and now you know how to do it. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.